we, we talked about what you listen to when you listen to an individual audition, but what would you what will you listen for when you listen to an ensemble? Uh, well, it's you know very similar to what you listen to with an individual, but you're you know you know making it by times quite a few other players and. Uh, it still starts with rhythm and pitch, you know, that that part of it should be there. And then, uh, you know, I try not to be the person that is making judgments that are, um, I don't know what you would say, that would be my opinion. I, I don't want to do something that's just my opinion. So, um, you know, I'm going to do the basics to begin with. If it's, a, if it's a good tone, if it's in tune, and the rhythms are correctly played, and the dynamics are followed, and those kind of things, that, that all has to happen for it to be, uh, you know, kind of a superior rating. But then uh, beyond that, uh, I can usually tell in a heartbeat whether or not the people that are in the ensemble are listening to somebody else while they play. And that's probably the most important thing for a mature player, um, that even if you're playing a solo with a piano, if you're not listening to what goes on with the piano, if you're actually not connected that way, then you can really tell in the performance to me. So, you know, I listen to hear whether or not um, the players are listening to each other in a way that makes all the things, the little things happen, like balance and blend, like the style things, like uh, the articulations and, and dynamics even. Those, those kind of things happen kind of naturally when everybody's actually listening to someone else while they play. Then you've got younger, maybe more uh, less mature groups where people are actually listening to themselves while they play. And it makes a huge difference. I mean, they can only get so good doing it that way. It's, it just doesn't work. But that's a, another layer of uh, uh, multitasking, to listen to somebody else while you're playing. And, and I know as a professional, I'm going to have a concert tonight, and um, I have a supportive role as a second trumpet, but at the same time, I have some solos, and there's other people that I have to listen to. In fact, I mean, we walked out of one rehearsal, and the bassoon, second bassoon player is somebody I know, and it was, you know, we play the same note in that one spot. I said, yes, I know. <laughs> you know, that we're the, so there's, you know, we, there's this listening to somebody else while you play that if you're in any kind of an ensemble, or as I said, even a soloist with an accompanist, you really have to do it in order to make it a, a wonderful performance. You know? So I, I listen to those kinds of things. Wonderful. And as an educator, I have another question, maybe hard to answer. What are some methods you use to get students to listen to each other, maybe at the university level, or you've done some honor bands and mm. state, state ensembles? Uh, well, you know, speaking it is important. And then if you're conducting, you can, the, 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 the things that you say the most when you're conducting are the things that your group will respond to. So if you never say anything about pitch or rhythm or any of those kinds of things, then they don't, they don't pay attention to it. So if you're saying things like that, but in, the, in an ensemble setting with a wind ensemble, I used to have people play it, one person plays the pitch and the other person matches the pitch. And uh, you can tell, if you're listening closely, that this person is supposed to be just staying steady and that person actually locks on. And there's something that happens when they hear the other person more than themselves. That's what I tell them. You've got to hear the other person more than your own playing. Because that's how you play. You play with your own playing kind of in your peripheral hearing. You know, and you, and you focus on something. If, it's, if you're playing with the piano, you better hear that piano <laughs> very closely as you're as you're going along. But if you're playing in, in a large ensemble, it's going to be somebody else that has the same note or an octave. They start locking in that you hear that you've got that. And you have to hear that person more than yourself, really, while you're playing. Your own playing becomes kind of peripheral. And you're listening in this heightened way. And so we used to just, you play a note and you match the pitch. And then reverse them. You play the note and you match the pitch. And then change instruments. Start from the top down within, let's say, the clarinet section. And the last year player still has to match the first chair player, but then go from you know one section to the other. We did one of these kind of se uh, sessions at a VMEA conference talking about it with a high school band, and we had the piccolo player and the tuba player come up and match and reverse, and it was it was wonderful. And the audience could tell when the because the instruction isn't playing tune. The instruction is hear the other person more than yourself. And when they do, it doesn't just make the pitch the same. It affects the timbre you know, the tone quality of it, everything, even a piccolo and a tuba can have some kinds of those things match up. And, um, you know, that's what you do. I, you know, I play in chamber groups, a quintet, two different quintets, one here at the university with a faculty group and one from the Maryland Symphony. And, uh, you know, when I'm matching a, a trombone player, I play differently than I'm matching a trumpet. And I, I don't know how it happens. I just hear the person so well, I match that sound. And then, truth be told, when I match that trumpet, I play different than I match another trumpet. There, there's a subtle difference, a subtle nuance that's happening, and I just, you just do it. And uh, it, that's all from 
listening. You know, you just have to be able to play your notes and do what you do, and then you match something else. And when I'm playing in the Ocala Symphony, I'm playing principal, and I, it's a little different. Uh, but there's still somebody I'm matching as I do it, even if it's just the general how the, you know, e even if it's me starting the Mahler Five, the first note I play after that is everything else I play too. <laughs> Whatever note that note is, all the other notes I play after that has that as a benchmark. You know, so when you play an unaccompanied so solo, it's however you get started and everything else has that to be relate to and it's still in your head. To me, it is when I'm playing the other notes. So teaching that is not easy. If you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody, you can have them match you and then reverse it, match them. And you can tell when, you know, the, the instruction is not to play in tune, it's to listen to the other person more than you hear your own playing. When that happens, they just fall together. It's a vital part of professional playing.